Hello and welcome to the BFI London Film Festival. This year's BFI Flair special presentation is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I'm your host, Isabel Stevens from Sight and Sound magazine. And joining me is award-winning screenwriter and director, Celine Siama. Welcome, Celine. Well, thank you. Firstly, Celine, congratulations on such a beautiful film. It completely shook me when I saw it in Cannes. For those of you who haven't seen it, um, the film tells um, the story of a romance between two women in 18th century France. Adèle Hanel plays a rich young woman called Eloise who's engaged to a man who she's never met before and she's not very happy about it. <laughs> Noemi Merlon plays a painter who must supply a wedding portrait of Eloise, but Eloise doesn't want to pose for her. In case you might have guessed, this is not your typical period drama, but it's all the better for it. And the film tells many stories of women at this time that we haven't heard or seen before. So Celine, up to this point, you've made coming of age stories, um, films such as Tomboy. By the way, if you want to watch Tomboy and loads of other LGBTQ plus films, they're available now on BFI Player. Simply use the code FLAREALIVE19 to claim your extended free trial subscription. So the coming of age stories um, that you've made so far, they're about young people discovering themselves and finding their way in the world. Um, they do obviously foreground desire, but this is a film that foregrounds a love story. So between two women. So I was wondering why you wanted to tell this love story now and why did you decide to set it in the past? Well, you know, I, I had the privilege of doing cinema at a young age. I did, you know, I wrote my first feature. I was 26 and basically wanted to talk about youth. Um, and now, you know, I'm a 40 year old woman. <laughs> so I felt like it was the time I really wanted to tell the story of grown women, um, not, you know, the rise of desire as the rise of your own discovery, self discovery, but to craft a film with a strong love dialogue um, and wanted to talk also about women artists and you know do a mix between a love dialogue and a creative creation dialogue um, so decided to go for a painter because I felt it was really really cinematic and 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 also because I wanted to show somebody at work you know not the artist expressing herself or himself, but really see the layers, the concentration, and, and painting allows you that. We really wanted to discover it also, because I don't know much about painting. Mm -hmm. um, and um, went throughout art history, found out that there was this amazing moment in the second half of the 18th century, right before the French Revolution, where there was like a rise of a feminine, female <clears throat> artistic scene, uh, pretty much because also of the fashion of portraits um, and there were hundreds of women painters at the time and I definitely there was like this new urge to tell this story when I discovered the body of work of these women that were then erased from art history so that's why also I wanted to go in the past you know it wasn't about uh, I don't know, doing my period piece or going for this genre I was actually you know feeling that these stories had hadn't been told and so that they definitely belong to today mm -hmm. um, and also this kind of challenge that you know the period piece it goes with such conventions um, and I'm always obsessed about the contemporary and you know that was also my compass to make the most contemporary object um, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because you actually pick a contemporary painter to paint the, the portraits that we see in the film. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody who's kind of like, you know, a classical art history painter who recreates you know, older paintings. Yeah. Say. Because I wanted to talk about women artists and it felt like super right to actually go to a young women artist today and, and and see, you know, see how she works and what's her question and what's her answers and um, and also to make it true uh, because with Noemi Merlant, who plays the painter in the film, you know, we, we went to see this young woman that I met, I met her work on Instagram actually. Her name is Hélène Delmer, she's 32 years old. She had no interest in cinema, she didn't even know my, my work. And we went and meet her and actually we looked at her working um, and, and Noemi was all about, yeah, looking at the painter, and I was looking also at the painter, but also at yeah how how she thinks and and how she she 
you know, what's her style, and then together we would um, craft the character and the visual style of the character, which was, uh, yeah, one of the biggest challenge of the film, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, the film is a period drama, but it feels so relevant to today and everything that's happening today. Um, it's called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Fire is, you know, you see fires crackling in the background, you hear them, um, but it's also kind of incendiary too. Um, how much were you thinking about today's world when, when you were making it? Well, I was only thinking about today's world. I mean, I was thinking a lot about the past because I wanted to make, I didn't want the movie to be an anachronic, anachronistic, um, everything, I mean, it's really accurate. This character, we invented her. You know, I didn't inspire myself of one of the painters uh, and didn't take their body of work. Really um, wanted to invent one, working with a sociologist of the art, not even historian of the art. To, so she's totally accurate. Um, and everything, you know, even the costume design, the set design, this is all really, really, we've done a lot of research. So it's, it's, it's not about making it modern uh, or winking at the past from today. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's, what should be contemporary is the film. Uh, you know, a lot of films are looking at contemporary subject, not being contemporary forms. So um, I got lost in that answer. Yeah. <laughs> got totally <laughs> lost in my answer. We, we, um, um, but I guess the, the film also, I mean, there's an abortion scene in it. Yeah. And, you know, you, like, that feels just, like, so vital that, you know, and it's it's uh, abortion. You know, I think, like in period dramas, you often hear about a woman you know, getting pregnant, and it's an unwanted pregnancy, but she has to marry a man. Mm -hmm. So it, that happens off closed doors, and here's women taking control of their own lives. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the abortion scene, you actually see a baby on the bed because it's in a poor woman's house, mm -hmm. and you know, the baby's on the bed lying next to this woman who's having an abortion. Yeah, like it's. I mean, that's quite radical. It is radical, and it shows. It's it's also about how it's an everyday. Thing you know, getting an abortion is an everyday thing in women's lives, and at the time, women were in charge of women's health, mm -hmm. um, and we also wanted to show that now obstetric is in the end of uh, men, you know, and it's quite different. Um, so setting it in the past offers us also a dynamic of uh, another dynamic of power that is sometimes you know more equal than or more you know that could be interesting for today um, we really wanted to share the intimacy of this of, of these women and their experience and it's not something that's been represented you know i haven't seen a lot of abortion since even in mm -hmm. contemporary films um, so you know when an image is missing it definitely belongs to the time which you you make it yeah. And um, how did you go about casting the actors? Um, I understand that um, both Adele and no no Noami hadn't worked together before. Mm -hmm. Was that really important for you to have two actors who, who you know people don't know, don't sort of recognise them from being on screen together? Well, Adele is pretty identified, and mm -hmm. she was uh, part of the project since the beginning, since the writing. Um, but I and and we know each other very well because we we've, we've been doing our first feature together, Water Lilies. Um, and um, but I really wanted fronting her, some facing her, somebody that I didn't know at first, um, because it's part of uh, I mean the pleasure also of of doing films to actually yeah meet somebody, look at somebody for the first time. Um, I love that dynamic of collaboration. Um, and, uh, but regarding the love story, I really wanted to make this iconic couple that you would strongly believe in also because it's a lesbian love story and you know, you don't want, I don't know, you don't want to see the performance. Um, and um, we met Noemi, uh, I met Noemi by myself during the process of casting. I was giving her the line, I was the model and mm -hmm. she was the painter. So we were already trading places um, and then Adele and Noemi did uh, a says together, and it was striking how well beautiful they were together. Um, how there was super strong chemistry, and this felt very new. I mean, they had this strong sense of equality that we are looking for throughout the film. We are trying to build a love dialogue out of with equality, um, even and you know they have the same age, they have the same height, which is really important in cinema. But they have this strong contrast, and this felt like an iconic pair. Mm -hmm. 
And um, yeah. I knew my heart was racing when I saw them both in the same frame. And that's what you're looking for, because I guess this is contagious. Yeah. Absolutely, and it is in the film too. And the mm -hmm. ending is just so, um, you know, striking um, because of this desire mm -hmm. that has kind of crept up on you throughout the film. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a slow burn as well, isn't it? It is. Like, it is really. Where's the idea of like what's falling in love like, and not in the convention of cinema? Mm -hmm. Because the convention of cinema is really not about how you're going to fall in love. It's about how you're going to handle the conflicts <laughs> within love stories. You know. Um, so basically, the experience is about seeing two people's desire and then love bursts and flourishes and, and you, you, you go through the same stages. So mm -hmm. basically, you're, you're falling in love throughout the film. Yeah. Um, and what kind of directions did you give the actors like when you're walking them? Did you give them films to watch? Were you, um, you know, like how sort of did you go about building the characters with them? No, I'm not that kind. I mean, we didn't rehearse. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not never giving them films to watch. I don't watch my films myself when I'm making a film. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I love films, but <laughs> in the process of making a film, which is like two years, I don't watch films. And it's not, it's because, you know, I want to, to, to invent the language, the grammar of each film. And there's a lot of authority in things that have been done previously and masterpieces and 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 you want if you have to I want to be candid, you know. And yeah. you know, it's not it's not being it's not about it's about being modest also, mm -hmm. I think, in a way, in a weird way. Um, and you know, when you're trying to make something new, you, you should yeah, be focused on creating new images and new dynamics. So to, we didn't went through building the character together. It was very much about the present on the set, um, and even on the set, you know, we are not searching together for how we're going to shoot the thing. Like, you know, the protocols mm -hmm. often is that you, the, the actors they come on the set and they do the scene, and you're looking at it and you're like, okay, I'm going to put my camera here and whatever. We're not doing like that. I, yeah, I'm pretty accurate about how I want to shoot things mm -hmm. and it's pretty much designed sometimes since writing for some of the scenes um, so we put this all up the lighting and everything the dolly and it's all set and then they come and they're told about the path that they're gonna have to go through which is a way not not to be I mean it's not to be there's a lot of constraint but it's it's about them also um, and, beginning the conversation at that level so they you know it's always a mental journey uh, and then we can be really accurate also about the rhythm the steps the, and the then their level of proposition is also very high yeah in a way and you work with Claire Mathon great female cinematographer how important was it for you to have a woman as a cinematographer and have quite a you know 50 or more gender balanced crew than mm. maybe is on most films out there? Well, it was our first collaboration with Claire Maton, um, but I've been working with a female DP, Christelle Fournier, on my three previous features, so I know nothing else, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's always the weird part of those kind of questions is that I know my sets. Um, and the actors, they are better at answering that question because they know more sets, you know? Yeah. Um, cinema has a strong hierarchy. Uh, and even on my set, there's a strong hierarchy, obviously, but I'm, I'm the boss, so I just create like the world I want to live in mm -hmm. <laughs> for two months. Um, and I, I'm in charge of that, and, but the question is, yeah, you, you have power, but what, what are you going to do with your power? Mm -hmm. um, and created this really horizontal way of working, very, very collaborative. The movie is about that, mm -hmm. actually, it's about how, you know, there is no muse. Um, the, the sitter and, and, and the painter, the model and the artist are just co-creators um, and we really work like that and the fact that it's a very hybrid set uh, of course makes it uh, super joyful. Uh, There's a very, very cool work atmosphere but it's always been the case so mm -hmm. I don't know but you know I'm, it's always, I find it super strange that people would want to be exclusively uh, 
with the, you know, this, we should ask this question to the male directors yeah. with their set that are exclusively male. They seem to enjoy each other's company very, very much, you know. Um, also, you, <laughs> and we enjoy our company very, very much. <laughs> um, you raised the question of power, and I think that's something that has um, uh, is really interesting uh, conversation at the moment. But the sort of relationship, power dynamic relationship between the actor and the director. Um, I'm thinking, I guess, uh, bringing into um, focus previous uh, lesbian romances such as Blue is the Warmest Color, where the relationship between the actors and the director was very controversial. Um, was this, um, you know, how do you, you obviously work much more collaboratively. Was this, um, you know, were you, when you went set out to make this film, were you like, yes, I want to make a lesbian romance that's different from other romances out there? Yes, and working with, direct, with actors <coughs> in a more collaborative way rather than a, I'm the boss. Yeah. Well, yes, but of you course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am the boss, and 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 I'm not saying you know that I'm not saying that there's no hierarchy. I'm just saying like, mm -hmm. how do you handle this? And um, well, it's of course we're trying to propose something new, and you know, blue is the warmest color is um, is, is uh, very st straight uh, imaginary of lesbians, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and also of of a love dialogue, you know. Uh, our imaginary is different, uh, our power dynamic is different, um, and that's why also it's a good news for cinema. <clears throat> because it's mean, it means it's a new ride, it's a new journey for the viewer, who's, who's not gonna have to go through the same old conflicts and the same old negotiation that we're all being told as the way you, you tell stories. You know, even in writing classes, it's about a good scene, it's about a good conflict. Um, and you know, if there's not this all kind of conflict, then it's all about surprise. So that's also what can rise from equality. It's great new tension, dramatic tension, erotic tension, um, humorous. Um, so you know, it's not about being. It's not always about being serious. It's also about being light-hearted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the line for you, I mean, like, in terms of pushing actors? Um, because, I mean, it comes up even with female directors. Someone mm -hmm. like Agnes Varda talks about how much she pushed Sandrine Bonaire mm -hmm. and Vagabond. What's the kind of, do you have a line um, with, you know, how far you will push an actor for a scene? Well, I never felt like this was a struggle. I mean, before, I mean, it's quite different on that film because they are professional mm -hmm. actresses. Yeah. So um, it's not the same dynamic at all. When you work with non-professional actors, as I've been doing, you never push the line. You have to put up. You never negotiate. It's impossible to go into a negotiation with a kid saying, OK, you have to do this or this. So it's all about the mise-en-scene being in charge of you know, <clears throat> respecting their boundaries, because they're not actors. You, you, you took them for who they, they become actors in the process of making the film. Maybe in the end, they'll be actors. Mm -hmm. But you're in charge, which is basically also being very lonely. Uh, you're more lonely. Yeah. Um, whereas within this film, um, it's it's all about you know. I never had to. I never thought, ah, oh, I'm not gonna get this. Mm -hmm. Oh, never. So I, I can't say you know. I can't invent it. Uh, yeah. It's. And you know, and it's not that hard. It's like when people tell me, how, but how do you do film again? It's like, well, you know, it's not that hard not to objectify women. Come on, I didn't scratch my head for hours thinking, <laughs> how am I not gonna objectify women? I yeah. mean, it's a global philosophy and you have to find local solutions. So I'm not saying it's, you know, it's, it's always difficult to know how you're gonna shoot a scene, where you're gonna put your camera. It's always a question, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it's not a moral question. Uh, but there's, ethic, there's ethics involved, of course, and, uh, and this is not boring. This is not about not being free to create. Actually, I think it's being more free to create because, you know, if you keep repeating, repeating the same conventions, the same power dynamics, the same storytelling, the same images, this, you, you're not that free to create, actually. So, you know, I feel like this is so, this is so positive. We should be all be really, really joyful and thankful that we are the contemporary of this cultural moment because it gives us the opportunity to invent. And so, you know, it, uh, I'm super enthusiastic about this. Yeah. And do you think that, uh, like, you can feel, like, Me Too, the movement changing cinema, like, for, you know, 
Is there change happening on, on your side in France? Are you seeing that? In France, it has been, we, we, we've had the backlash without me too, you know. So uh, it, it became this whole cultural debate around freedom of creation. That's why we also we created 50-50 by 2020, which is not about 50-50 male women director, but it's about, you know, 50-50 in the room where the decisions are taken. Mm. Uh, so in the room, it's, we're fighting for a better repartition of power, hoping that you know this will change, and also making the statement that it's political. You know, it's not about the opinion. It's not about uh, uh, the, the, um, the French galanterie or w what is going to be the, 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 the seduction between men and women, because that's basically what we've all been talking about in France, which is not interesting at all. Um, and you know, the market will make it happen. Obviously, because that's what has happening. You know, it's it, we can see the changes. We will see the changes in the in the big commercial side of the industry, because they have to. Otherwise, people won't go and see the film. You know, you can't do the big racist comedy. I mean, you still can, but uh, hopefully there'll be less sexist and racist uh, films made by the industry for for big audiences. And you know, so it's sad, but sometimes it's it's this way. It's the uh, it's where you have the opportunity, uh, you know, and it might be cynical, but I don't care. <laughs> we want the new images. We don't want the old ones, mostly. Yeah. That seems like a great moment to wrap up. Thank you very much, Sabine. Um, just a reminder that um, if you want to watch Tomboy and loads of other LGBTQ plus films, they're all available on BFI Player Now. Simply use the code FLAIRLIVE19 to claim your extended free trial subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. I can be with you tonight. Anything is possible. You're gorgeous. Can I draw you? Is this some kind of fantasy? It is the desire to fall in love. At some point, you got to decide for yourself who you're going to be. Suffering is nothing when there is love. Love is everything.